The Life of Legoshi, Beastars Legoshi is a male gray wolf and the main protagonist of Beastars. Though feared and misjudged by others for being a tall carnivore, he is actually quite mild-mannered, docile, and awkward. Legoshi has taken it upon himself to solve the mystery of the murder of Tem, and later finds out firsthand the extent of the prejudices of the world he lives in. Welcome to the Amagi, and in today's video, we're going over the life of Legoshi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background Legoshi was born to his mother, Lino. In order to give Legoshi the best chance of living a normal life as a supposed purebred gray wolf, Lino decided to have him via a one-night stand with an aspiring gray wolf actor named Miyagi in order to suppress the Komodo dragon gene she carried. This ended in success, although Legoshi never learned of his father's identity. In his early childhood, Legoshi was raised by his mother and grandfather Gosha, a Komodo dragon. This was the case until his mother began to isolate herself within her bedroom in an attempt to hide her emerging Komodo dragon traits, which altered her body. In this state, Lino would only interact with Legoshi through a small hole made through her bedroom door. When Legoshi reached the age of 12, he shared his final interaction with his mother. Late in the night, she came into his room to share a hug with him, believing he was asleep. Afterwards, Lino ended her own life. This event weighed heavily on Legoshi, filling him with guilt for many years, believing he could have done something to stop his mother's suicide. Over the years, Legoshi and Gosha grew more distant as the young wolf began to secretly blame his grandfather for the loss of his mother. Gosha believed it would be best for Legoshi to attend Cherryton Academy as a boarding student to distance him from the house as his mother passed away. Drama Club Arc Legoshi witnesses Els talking with other herbivores about Tem's murder that took place at Cherryton, which was caused by a carnivore. He learns that Els is now distrusting and scared of carnivore students. In the drama club, the members are discussing the murder, which causes great tension among the carnivores and herbivores until they're interrupted by the intentional temporary blackout caused by Legoshi. He also speaks of Tem's possible regrets, asking Els directly if she was sad about Tem's death. Later, Legoshi checks out Tem's locker, who is discovered by the other members of the club, to which Legoshi leaves the room. In the hallway, Legoshi observes the full moon and sets out to eliminate the leases of Tem. Els looks for her watch that she forgot until it's illuminated by Legoshi, who is waiting for her. Scared, Els takes scissors in an attempt to defend herself from Legoshi, who only approaches and takes off her scissors very easily, then takes her arms and gives her a love letter from Tem. Legoshi tells her about Tem's feelings, shortly after Els thanks him and apologizes for the things she said about him, and promises to retract with the other girls in the club, which Legoshi denies and prefers to keep their meeting as a secret and leaves. The next day, Jack and Legoshi have a conversation where Legoshi explains the plot of the school play soon to be released. Jack asks him if he likes that story, to which Legoshi replies that he likes tragic stories. Hours later, in the drama club, Legoshi has a conversation with Rui about the lighting of the play. They're interrupted by Kai, who abruptly enters the room and asks Rui for an explanation about not getting the role that belonged to Tem. Legoshi tries to leave, but Rui stops him and tells Kai that due to poor performance as an actor, he was removed from the acting group. From that moment on, he is part of the stage crew along with Legoshi. This infuriates Kai, and he tries to hit Rui, but he's stopped by Legoshi, who tells him that the safety of the main actor is paramount, and he tries to dissuade Kai by telling him that the stagehands are also important. Kai is intimidated by Legoshi and leaves angry. Rui expresses an interest in Legoshi because this achievement intimidates Kai, and he asks him for help with something. Sometime later, because another student still could not memorize his lines for the next rehearsal, Rui sets out to help him, secretly rehearsing in the school gym that same night after the school curfew. He asks Legoshi to stand guard outside so that they're not discovered. In the early night, Legoshi is nervously standing guard in front of the school gym and is eager for Rui and Zoe to finish their rehearsal. After waiting a while, Legoshi detects the scent of an herbivore approaching the place and hides, scared. 
He peeks out but fails to distinguish the animal due to the intense fog. Legoshi wonders if he should catch the animal if discovered. The herbivore detects Legoshi and tries to flee the place. In an instinctive jump, Legoshi catches the animal, who turns out to be a small rabbit named Haru. Legoshi, feeling overwhelmed by the feeling of having Haru in his arms, begins to manifest his predatory appetite, accompanied by a kind of predatory consciousness who encourages Legoshi to eat Haru. Even after denying it, Legoshi finally decides to eat Haru and nails his claws into her arm. Before he can devour her, Legoshi is interrupted by Zoe, which makes him react, and Haru takes advantage and runs away. Zoe, without having realized what happened, asks Legoshi to accompany him to see Rui, who had an accident. Rui had injured his leg to prevent Zoe from falling off the stage due to the lack of light. Legoshi helps Rui to walk, and they leave the gym together. Later, Legoshi finds himself washing his hands in his school bathroom, and seeing himself in the mirror, he sees a wild version of himself, which makes him react violently by hitting the mirror and breaking it. The next day, due to his recent incident with Haru, Legoshi is depressed, thoughtful, and very distracted, making Jack worry about him. While eating in the school cafeteria, suddenly two carnivore animals start arguing until they start fighting and one of them bites the other. This causes Legoshi to remember his incident with Haru and to yell fiercely at them to stop, causing the aggressor to notice Legoshi and want to fight him. Rui arrives on the scene to calm the situation and manages to make the aggressor leave. After the situation calms down, Rui rebukes Legoshi for restraining himself and leaves. Sometime later, Legoshi is making the costumes for the play with the other stagehands behind the scenes until Legoshi finds the suit that Tem would have worn in the play, something that at times made team members nervous, so they avoided the subject. In need of flowers for the stage decoration, Dom entrusts Legoshi to go get flowers on the school roof gardening club. Legoshi takes Kibi with him, and upon reaching the door of the club, he notices a familiar smell, and when he opens the door, he sees Haru. In shock at meeting her, Legoshi tries to invent an excuse to leave the place, but Kibi goes ahead and mentions that he has an engagement and leaves Legoshi alone. Legoshi asks Haru for the flowers needed for the drama club, and she accepts, but on one condition that Legoshi help her move the heavy plants. While helping her, Legoshi guiltily asks Haru how she injured her arm, but she declares that she doesn't remember. After they plant some seeds, Legoshi feels a certain attraction towards Haru. After finishing the job, in the club room, Haru thanks Legoshi for his help. Legoshi feels guilt, wondering if he should tell Haru that it was him that night. Haru misinterprets Legoshi's nerves and begins to undress. Oh, spicy. After undressing, Haru begins to open Legoshi's shirt and pants, and he's paralyzed for the moment without understanding Haru's intentions. Before Haru could pull down his pants, he reacts and stops her. Haru, not understanding why Legoshi stops her, asks him if it was not that for which he came. You know, that. Legoshi covers her with a blanket and leaves, leaving poor Haru confused. Legoshi leaves the club without being able to understand Haru's previous intentions and meets Kibi. He tells him that Haru is popular with the herbivores and that she has seduced many males. Kibi asks Legoshi if she tried something, to which Legoshi replies no, in that she's a good girl who loves her flowers. Legoshi recommends not using her flowers for decorating the work. Later, Legoshi realizes that he has no experience with romance, and tries to investigate it in the school library, without obtaining results. The next day, Legoshi attends a ceremony commemorating the drama club, headed by Rui who is given an honor award by Headmaster Gon himself. Rui took the microphone and gave a few words to the public, declaring that he would show coexistence and prosperity in the performance of the play, and invites the public to witness the play. Legoshi admires the value of Rui speaking to the public. Later in the drama club, Kai talks to Legoshi and shows his disgust from Rui's words, and he notices that Legoshi remains thoughtful. Kai asks Legoshi if he has ever considered joining the acting team. Legoshi claims no, in an attempt to find out Legoshi's reaction for not wanting to stand out, Kai starts asking him several questions. Kai asks him if he felt nervous when he was recruited, and announces that all the other members of the club were also recruited for having some sort of secret or a special condition, of which Legoshi did not know. Suddenly, Legoshi thinks that even Rui could have a secret. Rui has a collapse before the play, and Bill reveals that he has a fracture in his left foot, so he will not be able to participate in the drama club performance. 
Rui calms down and asks Bill to be a stand-in for tomorrow's show. In rehearsals, Bill happily performs well, while Legoshi, who must now fill Bill's role, is very nervous about it. Bill assists him in rehearsals in a less than delicate way. Bill says strong animals should stand out, and he will give his all in tomorrow's performance. After the rehearsals, Legoshi meets Els, who accompanies him while they talk. Els gives him words of encouragement and tells him to have Bill's back. Legoshi, after saying goodbye, is motivated to do his best. The next day, before the performance, upon meeting with the other members of the club, Bill notices a surprised Legoshi who indiscreetly approaches him. Bill nervously asks for a break to go to the bathroom and Legoshi follows him. In the bathroom, Legoshi confronts Bill and reveals that he's carrying a vial of blood which Legoshi could smell. Bill reveals that it is rabbit blood, but that it does not belong to any student. He received it from another classmate. Angry, Legoshi tries to attack him, but Bill easily stops him. Bill says that it is a justified doping to relieve his tension and that he cannot be like him. Legoshi leaves and tells him that he will make him pay on stage. During the school play, Bill plays his role, but without managing to amaze a disappointed audience who expects to see Rui. This causes Bill to gradually succumb to the pressure. Furious, Legoshi enters the scene prepared to punish Bill, while he continues to dictate his lines. Legoshi interrupts him, giving him a strong blow, which leaves all the spectators in shock. While Bill remains motionless in surprise, Legoshi continues to beat him brutally, and nobody from the club has the courage to try and stop him. The overwhelmed public doesn't seem to distinguish the fight from a performance, and after taking several hits, Bill stops Legoshi and holds him between his arms. Bill manages to deduce that Legoshi may have been engaged to a rabbit in the past. Bill cuts Legoshi's back with his claws and tells him to accept the relationship between them. Suffering pain from Bill's scratch, Legoshi remains motionless in an attempt to endure the pain. Bill tries to persuade Legoshi to accept his defeat and carry on with the performance. Not receiving an answer, Bill drops Legoshi to then counterattack. But before he's able to do it, Bill is stopped by Rui, who carries a sword and retakes the role of Adler. The public is shocked by Rui's appearance, and continuing with his role, he reveals to know Bill's actions and challenges him to real combat. Bill, intimidated by Rui's imposing figure, runs away from the scene, and Rui helps Legoshi to get up while they both receive acclaim from the public. Later, the show turns out to be a success, and nobody manages to discover the real situation. Meteor Festival Arc A month after the school play, summer has arrived, so Legoshi and his roommates are cutting their fur due to the summer heat. At the Drama Club, it is announced that the Drama Club was selected to collaborate in preparation for the Meteor Festival, which excites the club members, except for Legoshi and the other club stagehands, who are the ones who will take the hardest work. No fun being a part of stage crew. In the Drama Club warehouse, stagehands are getting ready to restore most of the decorations from last year. At sunset, after finishing the planning, the club stagehands return to school while they talk. Legoshi sees Haru and separates from the group to go to her. He approaches Haru unconsciously chasing away Mizuchi and her companions who harassed Haru. Legoshi is dumbstruck by Haru's appearance and musters up the courage to try to help her with the flowers, and he also offers Haru a handkerchief. Haru takes Legoshi's compassionate act wrong and rejects it, saying that she does not accept compassion from the males with whom she has slept with and tries to leave. Legoshi stops her and mentions that they did nothing. Haru agrees with him and invites him to the cafeteria and they end up having dinner together. While they eat, Legoshi is nervous and thinks about how to ask Haru what her name is. Haru begins to talk about trivial issues until highlighting the attention that Legoshi pays her. She often mentions how in her previous meeting, she had the intentions of sleeping with Legoshi and says that when Legoshi fled, he was being realistic. Haru, after finishing eating, says goodbye and leaves. Legoshi accompanies her to the bedrooms. After some time, Legoshi becomes happy and confused at the same time due to his feelings for Haru and the fact that he's a predator and she's a prey. But things get out of control when he discovers that Haru is Rui's girlfriend making the Grey Wolf hold a determination to make Haru his girlfriend. During the preparations for the Meteor Festival, he gets closer to both Haru and Juno, a new wolf student and member of the drama club after saving her from students that tried to harm her. Some days later, another case of murder is announced at the town. Legoshi cannot take the image of Haru out of his head and wants to meet her again. The next day, Legoshi, Bill, Aoba, and Tao go out to the city, and when they arrive at the black market, his predatory instincts go out of control. 
Some time later, Legoshi is captured by Gohin, who is the black market psychotherapist. He helps Legoshi control his instincts, but he finds out Legoshi's crush on Haru is nothing more than an obsession to eat her, which Legoshi negates, saying that he's really in love and departs, thanking Gohin. Four days later, Legoshi gets closer to Haru when he asks her to go back to the school with him. They get in an argument when Haru tells him that he's a predator. She said that he would not understand how it feels to have death always coming your way and tries to go away. Legoshi holds her and is almost arrested because the people on the train station thought that he was going to eat her. He gets closer with her but feels his life go down when Haru is kidnapped by the Shishigumi. He tries to ask Rui for help, only to be punched by him as Rui refuses to help him, telling Legoshi that a little sacrifice is of no concern. Getting angered at his words, Legoshi counterattacks and they start a fight. Lastly, Legoshi tells Rui that if he doesn't care about Haru, then he will make her his. Departing on a journey to save Haru, Legoshi enters the black market and reunites with Gohin. Although he is reluctant to help Legoshi, he agrees to give him a hand as he says that just one wolf isn't enough to take down the Shishigumi. The two fight their way against a bunch of lions and Gohin tells Legoshi to go ahead. Haru, who is now under Chief Lion's control, is forced to do what he tells her, including undressing herself. He says that he likes his prey enveloped with humiliation, that makes their blood flow which enriches the meat's flavor. After Haru resists, telling him that she's not afraid, he gives up and tries to eat her, and while Haru is terrified for her life, she's saved by Legoshi. In a disadvantage against the lion boss, Legoshi awakes his predator state and greatly injures the lion by biting him on the shoulder, but he doesn't hit any vitals. Talking to Haru, they hug, and Legoshi faints from his injuries. Getting out of the place, Chief Lion attempts to shoot and kill Legoshi, as he says that his gentle nature will kill him. Rui appears out of nowhere and kills the lion. Several lions enter the room and Rui provokes them, laughing maniacally. Injured but alive, Legoshi and Haru have a conversation in which Haru blames herself for his actual state, but Legoshi tells her that it's not her fault. When they have dinner, he asks her to find a place to spend the night as the last train had just left. Having bought a hotel room for them, Legoshi instantly becomes scared of what could happen with Haru as he enters his mail mode. Hmm. Having no worries about it, Haru tries to seduce Legoshi once again, only for him to be confused as he tries to kiss her. Embracing her, Legoshi tells her the truth about how they had met. Haru says that she knew for a while and that she's not afraid of him. After this, they try to make love, only to have Haru's prey instincts activate by having her shove her arm inside Legoshi's mouth, and she admits that it's a mistake for them to be together. Arguing, Legoshi ends up blaming himself for getting too much ahead of her, and they agree to just go to sleep. Returning to school, he talks to Juno, who tries to seduce him, only to be refused as she thinks Legoshi belongs to Haru. Juno leaves the room, and when Haru appears to see Legoshi, she gets mad at Haru for stealing Legoshi's heart, and she challenges Haru for Legoshi's affection. At the Meteor Festival, Juno tries to make Legoshi her lover by lighting a candle together, but he refuses as he wants to be with Haru. When they meet again, Haru tries to make Legoshi stay away from her as they can't be together because of their instincts, but Legoshi convinces her by telling her that he loves her. Finally, he accepts his fate as a predator and promises Haru to become stronger than his instincts. Haru tells him that she will be waiting. Murder Incident Solution Arc Legoshi meets with Haru on the stairs of a dormitory, and they talk about various topics, such as the rumor of the ghost of Cherryton Academy, who is said to be a ghost of a student who committed suicide, as well as the relationship that they have. Haru thinks that it will be complicated because of how everyone treats them, but that it's gratifying to be able to see and talk with Legoshi. He doesn't fully understand the kind of relationship he has with Haru, but his thoughts are interrupted by his fellow drama club members, asking him to heed the instructions for the fall play, albeit with much regret due to Rui's absence. While outside, Legoshi runs into Rui who, after being declared missing for two months, reappears on the school grounds. Both go to the drama club where the nostalgia for the stage permeates Rui, but he only returns to submit his resignation. Legoshi meets Juno alone and tries to talk to her, but the pain of being rejected during the Meteor Festival prevents him from even seeing her face. Even so, Legoshi does everything to try and reconcile with her, and invites her to the wolf room to reassure her. When they arrive in the room, Juno is congratulated by the other wolves inside because of her speech, as herbivores began to treat carnivores more kindly. The wolves propose for Juno to be a candidate for the title of B-Star now that Rui is no longer in school. 
Finally, Legoshi, tired of listening to that annoying sound throughout the school, tells the ghost to make an appearance to clear things up, to which the ghost complies with his request. Ooh, spooky. As it turns out, the mysterious entity that was chasing Legoshi throughout the academy appears before him. This mysterious rattlesnake was always watching his every movement within the academy. Legoshi interrupts the conversation because he has to pick up his clothes from the washing machine. The snake is amazed by Legoshi's bravery, who, despite knowing that he was being chased by a snake for several days, still has the courage to turn his back on her without any fear. She examines every part of Legoshi's body and argues that it is a work of art. Legoshi asks for her name, and she replies that her name is Rokume, the one and only security guard in the school. She mentions how she was left speechless from his performance in the school play, while surrounding Legoshi with her body appearing little by little. She explains that she knows everything he has done for that dwarf rabbit, how unhinged she was, and the more she learned about him, the more intrigued she became. At that moment, Rokume lifts Legoshi from the ground while putting pressure on him, but Legoshi only caresses her scales and notices the pain that she has been carrying alone. Rokume, after hearing those words from Legoshi, leaves him while she runs to the place where Tem died. Rokume thinks Legoshi will be able to solve this murder case because his instincts assure her that Legoshi is unique. And unlike the others, he has the necessary gifts that she lacks to finish all of this before the arrival of the new students to the academy. The next day, Legoshi is in the cafeteria, wondering how he can talk to Tem's closest acquaintances outside of the drama club, but since he's a carnivore, he knows herbivores will avoid him. Jack sees Legoshi and asks him what's going on. He tells him about what he wants to do, but he thinks it would be easy if someone introduces him to those people. Jack suggests that he talks to Els in order to be able to talk with Tem's acquaintances. Legoshi, following Jack's suggestion, talks to Els, but she shows nervousness because the person he wants to talk to is her ex-boyfriend. Even so, she agrees to help him. They both go together to the relaxation room and Els introduces Legoshi to Carl, who is a close friend of Tem's, but Carl won't tell him anything. The sheep and alpaca students inside the room start to boo Legoshi, and he can't get any answers. Disappointed that he can't find an answer, Legoshi asks himself what he should do and observes a kangaroo student who was running the night before. He decides to wait for him on a bench until dusk to ask him if he remembers if he saw someone the night Tem died. The student denies remembering anything from that day and asks him if he has anything else to say. Legoshi mentions that he knows he's the one who's stealing the gym clothes from the girls' locker rooms. Caught in the situation, he tries to hit him to escape, but he's defeated by Legoshi. The next morning, Tao and Kibi congratulate Legoshi for having stopped the thief. At that moment, Carl passes by Legoshi's seat, giving him Tem's diary. At dusk, Legoshi reads the diary's last few entries. Legoshi goes looking for Rokume to tell her that he will accept the proposal to search for Tem's murderer. In the drama club's male dressing room, Legoshi changes his clothes and, without a lick of context, says the word meat out loud, drawing the attention of the carnivores in the room, and immediately corrects himself by declaring that he has muscle pain, misleading the others. He later comments that he recently remembers that Tem was killed and that the only carnivores he dealt with were members of the drama club. This comment causes Bill to get angry and confront him for his insinuations, and asks him if he's blaming them for Tem's death after all this time. Legoshi denies it, stating that they simply must remember that incident. Bill asks him why, and Legoshi replies that it is because Rui left. Bill does not take his answer seriously by saying that he cannot trust a pervert who f***s with rabbits, causing Legoshi to lose his composure as Bill continues to mock him. Legoshi demands that he drop the subject and claims that it is Bill who cannot be trusted, about to mention that he ate meat at the black market. But he stops himself, and although Bill challenges him to say it, Legoshi does not allow himself to do so, because there are herbivores listening. Bill and Legoshi exchange grunts and prepare to fight until they are interrupted by the intrusion of a new student, who expresses himself eccentrically and pushes them away to claim his locker. After he finishes, he spots the scratches on Legoshi's forearm, claiming that they seem to be painful, and he asks him how many stitches they gave him. Legoshi replies about 35, winning the astonishment of this student who leaves, saying that they can fight again. Everyone is left confused, and due to his conceited attitude, the boy earns Bill's scorn. As well as mine, I hate this character. In the drama club, the girls are amazed by how handsome the new member of the club is. Pina is a freshman who will be part of the acting team, and he introduces himself. At sunset, the drama club carnivores attend a rooftop meeting, where Bill expresses his frustration and dislike for Pina. 
Bill declares that Legoshi is attending the meeting only because he believes that one of them killed Tem. Legoshi reveals that the reason he attended the meeting is that he wanted to chat with them, and says that he is also a suspect due to being a wolf. Legoshi nervously says that he has no evidence that any of them did not kill Tem, so that to rule out their guilt, they should prioritize the protection of their fellow herbivores every day and speak no ill of Pina. Bill declares that Legoshi is an animal of action and not of words, reminding him that he slept with a rabbit. He asks in a whisper if large breed carnivores can sleep with rabbits. Legoshi accidentally reveals that he did not sleep with Haru. Bill tells him that in some way he is a genuine pervert, and Aoba asks if his feelings for Haru come from his feelings for herbivores in general. Legoshi leaves and texts Haru to meet him. At nightfall, Legoshi and Haru have a casual conversation. Legoshi notices that Haru has a bandage on one of her fingers and asks her what happened. Haru tells him that she cut herself while cooking. Legoshi thinks about how he used to hate the size difference he has with Haru, but now it makes him happy. Wanting to protect her, Legoshi tries to convince himself that he is in love with Haru and not only glorifies her. Legoshi approaches Haru and caresses her face. When he is about to kiss her, Legoshi interrupts himself and asks Haru if she's still in love with Rui. Haru is annoyed and tells Legoshi that he doesn't know anything about her and Rui, but Legoshi says that he knows based on the expression on her face. He apologizes for wanting her to belong to him and that he is happy as long as she is alive. Legoshi leaves, telling her that from that moment on, he wants to protect her from afar instead. Outside the building, Legoshi realizes that Aoba was right, and he realizes that is what he must do for his love Haru, while a great anonymous figure stands behind him. Legoshi has a flashback, asking Tem if alpaca wool is different from sheep wool. Tem replies that alpaca wool is more delicate, and allows him to touch it to corroborate it. In the present, Legoshi is on campus in the early night, wondering why he remembered that and thinks that his relationship with Tem was nothing special. At the moment, Legoshi realizes that there's someone behind him, but before he can turn around, the stranger jumps him using his foot to press Legoshi's head to the ground. Legoshi yells at him to reveal his identity, and he punches him hard, knocking him out. Shortly after, Legoshi wakes up tied up and blindfolded while being dragged by the animal that attacked him. Upon seeing that he woke up, he lets go and proceeds to take him by the neck. Due to his cold, Legoshi cannot use his nose to discover the identity of his attacker, and he asks him if he's the one who killed Tem. In response, he smashes Legoshi's head against a column, stunning him. Legoshi suspects that this is a threat to make him stop snooping around. Legoshi remembers Tem and regrets having thought that their friendship was nothing special, claiming that herbivores treating carnivores gently is really something special, and is something that the carnivores must not forget. Remembering when Haru had told him that he would never understand what it feels like to be an animal whose life is always in danger, Legoshi claims that he now knows how it feels, claiming that he needs to make it up to the herbivores in some way. When the culprit approaches Legoshi, Legoshi forcibly French kisses him, and clings to him to get some clue to the identity of his attacker. Using his tongue, he feels his teeth and at the same time he also draws his saliva. The culprit manages to shake Legoshi off, kicks him, and flees the scene. Legoshi does his best to stay conscious to remember his flavor, while lamenting that he should have had his first kiss with Haru when he had the chance. In room 701, Jack and Kolod are hanging out, until Jack receives a call from Legoshi, in which only the snorts of his breath are heard. Jack interprets that as Legoshi asking him to bring tissues for his cold. While walking down the corridor, he tries to talk to Legoshi, but he doesn't respond. Through the phone, Jack hears the sound of the academy mill and deduces that Legoshi is there. Jack runs to the place while thinking about how the things that he can do for Legoshi dwindle as they grow older, and he's realized it. At the same time, Legoshi thinks about how he can't tell Jack how he is and hopes that he doesn't panic when he sees him. Jack arrives at the scene and indeed panics. He asks Legoshi if he's fine. Legoshi answers that he is fine and asks Jack to untie him. Shortly after, Legoshi and Jack sit down, and Legoshi tells Jack that he will not be in school for a while and asks him to tell the teachers that he went to take care of his grandfather. Jack asks why Legoshi won't tell him the truth, and he claims that seeing him encourages him. Legoshi tries to leave, but Jack stops him and tries to convince him to go to the infirmary. But Legoshi tells him that he cannot, because if he stays in school, he'll be killed. Jack asks him where he will go, and Legoshi answers that it's a place he doesn't need to know. Crying, Jack declares that the stronger Legoshi gets, the more miserable he becomes. Legoshi tells Jack that his strength is not because he wants to be happy, and he runs off and climbs the fence of the academy while Jack can only watch him go. 
Later, Legoshi arrives at the black market, wanting to see the only adult there that he can ask for help and advice. Legoshi stops at a bamboo stall to buy some, but falls silent, realizing that he isn't looking for advice, but for a place where he can calm his heart. At that moment, Gohin arrives at the place and asks for an order of bamboo. Gohin tells Legoshi that regarding his injuries, it seems that he's fine. Upon seeing him, Legoshi realizes that he does not want advice or a place to calm his heart, and asks Gohin to allow him to be his disciple, to which Gohin quickly refuses and leaves, leaving Legoshi behind. Later in his clinic, Legoshi tells him that the whole story of the predation case that occurred in the spring while Gohin heals his wounds. Legoshi alleges that whoever attacked him is definitely the culprit, so it'd be dangerous to let him walk free. Legoshi tells him that he wants to be stronger and asks him to teach him how to fight, which Gohin immediately refuses, reminding him that he is the black market psychotherapist, and he wouldn't be able to do his work with a bomb like Legoshi, who assures him that he will be quiet. Gohin reminds Legoshi that ever since he defeated the boss of the Shishigumi, they've been getting more influential in the black market, and if they see Legoshi while he goes in and out of the market, they will kill him. Gohin does not want to get into any more trouble and damage his reputation, so he orders Legoshi to leave. Legoshi continues with his insistence, and Gohin finally accepts and invites Legoshi to sit down. He does it enthusiastically, but the secretly mechanical chair immobilizes him. Scared, Legoshi asks him what he plans to do, and Gohin with the scythe tells him to take this as his initiation ceremony. He uses the scythe on Legoshi who screams in fear. I cannot wait to see how this turns out. The next morning, the boys in room 701 wonder where Legoshi might be. Jack, remembering how Legoshi left the night before, says that it is no use and does not believe Legoshi will be coming back. He comments that he lives in a different world than theirs now. At that moment, Legoshi enters the room and everyone is surprised and shocked by his new appearance. Legoshi casually apologizes for not having returned last night and leaves to take a shower. Later at the drama club practice room, Legoshi leaves everyone completely stunned by his sudden change in appearance. Legoshi explains the reason for his haircut and that he must go take care of his grandfather every evening. He will do his best to attend the practices, but will have to leave the cleaning for now and apologizes for the inconvenience. Sanu claims that everyone understands and everybody else agrees. After hearing everything Gohin told him, Legoshi realized he couldn't just stop going to the club. He needs to act as a deterrent. As long as he's there, he won't let anyone else die. Three days later, at three in the morning, Gohin is hanging out until he decides to see how Legoshi is, who is inside a cold room suffering from fighting his instincts for having a large slab of meat in front of him. He's about to give in until Gohin's call distracts him, and he tries to maintain his composure. But the smell of meat enters his nose strongly, and his saliva gushes out non-stop as if he's vomiting as he tries to resist his instincts. Gohin tells him that he must completely conquer his desire for meat, and his body needs to know how to become strong without meat. He chose this path on his own, and no matter how much he fights it, in the end, he is nothing more than a sinister and ferocious carnivore. To use his anger, hatred, fear, and stress to get stronger, to gather more and more until it burns, Legoshi decides to face his instincts head on, carry himself, and reach the stage behind. After training, seeing Legoshi's haggard appearance, Gohin teases him by saying that he looks terrible and that school will surely be hell for him. He alleges that he chose this path and will attend school during the day, training until dawn and running back and forth without using the train, and asks him if he doesn't want to give up. Legoshi refuses, and Gohin claims that a carnivore must eat meat to survive. Meat is vital for someone who trains his body to fight, but Legoshi argues that if he wants to become strong to protect herbivores, eating herbivore meat would go against everything he tries to achieve. Gohin states that carnivore athletes and soldiers eat meat secretly, but Legoshi simply says that he cannot do it. He understands them, but he will never do what they do. Gohin claims that he knew he would say that and declares that the world is not so simple that he can become strong with simple idealism. Legoshi replies that he will do what he can that does not involve eating meat and declares that he will return the next day. In the drama club warehouse, Pina tells Legoshi that he looks ugly and asks if something is wrong with him. Rude. Legoshi asks why he talks so classy and Pina comments that Sanu told him he should work on his etiquette and he asks again if he's okay, pointing out his cut fur and his weight loss. Pina asks him if he's dealing with a mental illness, and Legoshi replies that he does not have to worry about him. He states that he's supposed to show him the drama club warehouse, and hopes that he will at least take a little interest in backstage work, but Pina denies that possibility. 
Mikoshi continues to show him the warehouse until he detects a feminine scent coming from Pina, who asks if he can go. Mikoshi asks him why he has a bruise on his cheek, and Pina says that a girl he was making out with slapped him when he accidentally called her by another girl's name. A story with which Mikoshi, as well as I, do not really know how to respond. Pina asks him if he has a girlfriend, and Mikoshi imagines Haru. Pina asks him if he likes someone, but Legoshi refuses to talk about it due to his attempt to not think about Haru so he can focus on his training, although he cannot avoid thinking about her at all. Pina stops him, wishing to know about it and asks if he has his eyes on someone, claiming that it's very dog-like. Legoshi decides not to allow Pina, among all people, to find out about him, not someone as blatantly driven by his instincts as Pina, who asks if he would teach him about the meaning of pure love. He asks why everyone gets mad if one isn't dedicated to just one lover, and Legoshi replies that because it's insincere, but Pina argues that everyone has their way of being sincere, and for him being sincere means enjoying life while being true to himself, and asks what morals have done for them. Pina puts his hand on Legoshi's snout and teeth and affirms that if he were to eat him, he would not hate him for it. He turns off all the lights and gives as an example that if he were left alone in a small dark room with someone, and if that someone is a girl, he would have the urge to kiss her. He asks Legoshi if he feels the desire to eat him right now, stating that he is a sheep right in front of him that would allow it. An angry Legoshi, who in his 17 years of life as a male wolf, now experiences for the first time in his life a clear and intense hatred for an herbivore, and contains all of his fury. He shakes hands with Pina while smiling, claiming that he does not eat meat and has no girlfriend, and he does not need anything and is a peaceful wolf. Pina replies that that is also fine, and Legoshi leaves, furiously claiming that he's hungry and is going to the cafeteria to eat some vegetables, while stumbling on the way. Real smooth, Legoshi. Legoshi continues to investigate Tem's murder, but the only clue he has is the murderer's mouth. He decides to ask Juno to show him the inside of her mouth to discover if there are differences between males and females. Initially, she's against it, but she ends up accepting. Legoshi, upon, uh, closely inspecting, notes the big difference between male and female fangs. This serves as valuable information, and he says goodbye to Juno. Gohin inspects the progress of Legoshi's training, which is one that hardly a carnivore can overcome. He enters the room where Legoshi is training by interrupting him. He lets him know that he's not popular at all, and that the only girl he likes is a rabbit, but for various reasons he's distanced himself from her, then received advice from a new member of the drama club. This reminds him that he prefers to feel anger at herbivores, their joys and sorrows, and not to forget that they're not just carnivores and herbivores, but life forms. Legoshi asks Gohin to go to a certain place, and he carries the heavy bag of meat, his nose and stomach no longer aroused by what was once a life. When they arrive at the place, Gohin notices that the graves have names. When asked about it, Legoshi reveals that he investigated the origin of the meat that he procured, as well as the life history of each of them. The next morning, Legoshi tries to study for his exam, but he's overcome by sleep until he's interrupted by Haru's voice. She lets him know that she was asked out by a male friend. They begin to talk uncomfortably about what has happened in this time. Legoshi tries to be able to speak well with her, but she refuses to listen to him. Just when she decides to leave the place, Legoshi makes a marriage proposal, but not right now. Embarrassed, she tells him that he has to take several steps to get there. She leaves the place without giving him an answer. In the hallway, Haru meets a male student who asks if he could stop by the gardening club tonight. She declares that she's done fooling around and claims that she has set her eyes on someone who is scarier and weirder. Wonder who that could be. In the drama club, Riz demonstrated to have greater physical strength than Bill and Tao. This provokes Bill's competitive spirit and he proposed the jaw war game against Legoshi. Legoshi at first did not think about participating, but when he thought about it, he agreed. When he's quickly defeated by Bill, Legoshi begins to question his training because he cleared the first stage. His jaw strength has been significantly depleted to the point where he can barely bite into an apple, when previously his jaw strength hovered around 300 kilograms. In the locker room, Legoshi laments the loss of his jaw strength and wonders the reason for the situation. Realizing that he's completely alone in the locker room, Legoshi takes the opportunity to investigate the identity of the murderer now that he knows the taste of his saliva. Legoshi checks the lockers of the carnivores and takes a sip of the drinks of each of them. Failure after failure, Legoshi finally finds the last suspect's locker. Finding a completely crushed thermos by the hand of its owner, Legoshi remembers that his attacker was strong enough to knock him around with one arm and interprets this bottle as a warning to him. 
Later, the activities of the drama club are carried out with total normality, until suddenly Ellen's scream alerts everyone, and they see that Tao ripped off Kibi's arm while doing group stretches. While Kibi writhes in pain, Tao desperately tries to tell his companions that it was just an accident. Aoba and Bill tell the herbivores to stay back, but an upset Tao shakes Ellen, trying to make her claim that it was an accident. Bill stops him and holds him, while the others make a restraint to Kibi so that he does not bleed out. Legoshi monologues that it's not uncommon for a carnivore to underestimate their own strength and injure an herbivore's arm or leg by accident, which is why replantation surgeries have advanced, so they should be able to reattach Kibi's arm. Aoba tries to carry Kibi to take him to the infirmary, but a terrified Kibi does not want any carnivores to touch him for fear of losing his other arm. Aoba tries to convince him that he needs the strength of a carnivore to help him, but Kibi, scared and crying, flatly refuses. Kibi agrees for Legoshi to be the one to take him, and he accepts. Before leaving, he asks someone to take his arm for him. Everyone looks at the arm without daring to be the one to offer to carry it, until Riz gives in and offers. Riz covers his arm with the vest, and together with Legoshi, they run towards the infirmary. While Tao regrets what he's done, Sanu cancels the club activities and tells everyone not to panic. On the way to the infirmary, Kibi asks if he will be taken to a hospital, and Legoshi replies that it's likely, but he promises to make sure to visit him. After leaving Kibi in the infirmary, Riz gives Legoshi a handkerchief to wipe the blood off his uniform, but he returns it, claiming that he needed more than a handkerchief to clean it. He asks Riz if he was the one who ate Tem, and warns him that there's no point in hiding it. Riz proves his guilt by asking him if he found it because of the French kiss he gave him. Legoshi answers that that was the only way to find out and that he doesn't regret it. Riz alleges that he did not think Legoshi was going to confront him in this way, and declares that he never wanted to eat Tem, and that it was an accident. Legoshi asks him if he thinks he would let him get away with that excuse. Riz scratches the ceiling with his claws and declares that he will have to silence Legoshi permanently. Legoshi, paralyzed by fear, feels intimidated by Riz, and declares that he has no chances of winning, but he still prepares to fight him. Both are interrupted by Pina, who passes between them and informs them that they asked him to take Kibi's belongings to the infirmary. As Pina enters the infirmary, Legoshi and Riz calm down while diverting their attention to this interruption. When leaving, Pina makes a joke about the damage that Riz did to the ceiling and claims that he will not say anything. Before he can leave, Legoshi catches him and asks if he heard them, hoping that it's not the case. Unfortunately, Pina openly reveals that now he knows that Riz is the murderer and that he got involved in the matter intentionally. Shortly after, Pina, Legoshi, and Riz sit in the rest area where Pina proposes to have a peaceful chat and asks Riz to stop seeing him as prey. Riz comments that he just feels nervous and Pina agrees with him since two students now know his secret and there is only one way to calm down after that. Riz comes forward and says that he just has to kill him. Legoshi tries to tell him that he will not allow it, but Pina interrupts him, saying that he would not recommend hurting him, arguing that if two members of the drama club are killed, the police would have to do an investigation, and that even a primary school student would know that they would focus their investigation on the drama club. Leaving Riz cornered, Pina affirms that he will not tell anyone since they're both under a certain predicament, but who, for the moment, declares this a victory for justice and wishes that Riz won't sleep peacefully tonight. Pina and Legoshi leave, leaving Riz defeated and full of anger. Three days later, Legoshi does his homework with his roommates until everyone receives a message on their phones notifying them that the school will be segregated and the carnivores and herbivores will be in different classes starting next year. When Bill and Els arrive at the drama club after their own discussion about the situation, the members have already organized a vote to accept or oppose segregation. Els and Bill vote to oppose. They sit down with the rest, and Legoshi asks Bill if he had a fight with Els, to which he answers, no. At dusk in the black market, Legoshi is next to Gohin, observing the carnivores that are out of control. They notice the presence of a ferocious striped hyena, who they must capture and take to Gohin's clinic. Legoshi is sent to stop the hyena, so they start a fight in which the hyena manages to have an advantage over Legoshi, but gathers his energy to counter him and defeat him by slamming him against a wall. In his inner thoughts, Legoshi states he has a storage of data of sense he has been sniffing for 17 years, but only the data of animals he wants to protect is increasing, and especially Rui. Gohin brings out Legoshi to reality and tells him that they have work to do and points to animals that are addicted to gazelle meat. Gohin believes Legoshi can take them on his own and leaves him. As Legoshi faces them, he analyzes the enemy and what technique to use from Gohin's training. As he won't be able to help to catch up to a leopard, he decides to trip him and stop him from running. 
For the avian, he fears his scream may rupture his eardrums and grabs him by the beak and then punches him in the throat. Legoshi then uses Gohin's sleeping potion to knock them out. At Gohin's place, he congratulates Legoshi on a job well done. Seeing Legoshi still training, Gohin comments that the training won't help him and he needs an ally to defeat the brown bear. A patient enters and Gohin gives her some pills and a disc with music on it that will reduce predatory instinct. As the patient leaves, Gohin comments that she killed and ate two ferrets, but she rehabilitated very well. Legoshi doesn't find it good that Gohin never takes his patients to the police, even when they devoured someone. Gohin explains that since he is a panda, he doesn't like meat and that punishing criminals won't get you peace. He believes any carnivore can redeem themselves depending on their willingness, and he wants to help them. At the black market, the Shishigumi have caught the culprit and Rui is taken to him. They tell him that they captured one of the guys who plays dumb, but the other one escaped with an ivory husk. Rui sees that the captured guy is Legoshi and is surprised that he ate meat. Legoshi gets excited to see Rui and starts uncontrollably wagging his tail. He tries to explain that he didn't eat the meat and the blood is from them beating him up, but nobody believes him. Rui believed that Legoshi is the only real conscious carnivore, but now he thinks that he's a fool to have believed that. As he hates liars, he stops the lion and states that he will reveal his true identity. At the dinner table, the lions ask Legoshi about his name and he introduces himself as Haruo, a 27-year-old, and his tail reacts to the excitement, making the lions think that he's some kind of masochist. The table is full of meat dishes, and Rui tells Legoshi to eat as much as he likes, but Legoshi states that he's a large fox and he can only eat fried tofu. The lions explain that Rui loves eating meat, and Rui takes a bite, stating that cannibalism is good. That was the weirdest line in the show, I swear to god. Outside, Rui tells Legoshi that they're different, and he can come and hit him, but instead, Legoshi hugs him, and he's happy that he's alive. The only thing Rui is able to smell from Legoshi is the school body soap and no meat at all. Rui is reminded of how much Legoshi annoys him, and how he overwhelms him with his strength. Legoshi blames himself, but Rui states he chose his path, and it's not a consequence of saving Haru from Shishigumi. Rui wonders how Legoshi dares to touch him after he slept with Haru, but Legoshi explains that he didn't sleep with her and that they're not even dating, and that maybe she's waiting for Rui to return. Legoshi states that he's training under a doctor in the black market and asks Rui to run away with him. Rui states that he can't do that, and even though it may have started due to interest from both sides, the Shishigumi is his family now. The Shishigumi then point their guns at Legoshi, commenting that everyone lets their guard down, believing the Shishigumi became soft for having an herbivore as their boss. Rui believes that there are things that only he can do, and he tells Legoshi to become a hero and lead society. Legoshi refuses, attacks the lions, and manages to grab Rui. He states that he is something that Legoshi doesn't, and it's absolutely necessary in this world. An herbivore's dignity. As the lions refuse to shoot, Legoshi realizes that they really adore Rui. He tells him that he found the culprit of the drama club murder, and he's trying his best to catch him, but he and the school need Rui. Legoshi then pushes away Rui and jumps into the cliff. At the drama club, Legoshi is cleaning a light while the rest hear that Kibi is able to move his fingers. Riz wonders if he should visit Kibi as well, and as he talks more, he only angers Legoshi more, as he knows what Riz did. Legoshi ends up breaking the light, and he approaches Riz, asking him to tell him how big Tao's sin is. He grabs Riz and squeezes, but Riz remains calm and uneffective and states that carnivores must control their emotions. Pina steps in and calms Legoshi, who promises to pay for the light. When Pina and Legoshi remain alone, Legoshi wonders how Riz can remain so calm after eating a friend and that he felt a thick barrier between him and Riz. Pina comments that it's easy for Legoshi to lose his temper, while Riz is used to it and pretends to be a good bear. He's the exact opposite of Legoshi. Riz observes Pina and Legoshi talking, and in anger, breaks a piece of wood. In the dormitory kitchen, Riz prepares dinner for his roommates. For Riz, cooking is a hobby, and he loves to treat his roommates to home-cooked meals and always feels comfortable every time he cooks. Riz serves a delicious dish of curry for his friends, and they let him know that it has a stronger flavor than normal because Riz overseasoned it, and he promises to be more careful next time. For some reason, since the night that Riz devoured Tem, he has progressively lost his sense of taste, he ate Tem with his consent, and he was able to establish a true friendship with an herbivore. Just as the ingredients are entrusted to him, he delicately and peacefully mixed them together. His memories with Tem become even more beautiful, and he must never forget Tem's flavor. The memory of that night with Tem is what keeps him alive. Riz claims that eating is a celebration of life, and he bets Tem was smiling when he was about to enter his mouth. But upon seeing his hands, 
Riz has a hallucination where he sees his hands covered in blood and remembers Legoshi swearing to make him pay for his crime. Riz feels that Legoshi is going to expose him and ruin everything by desecrating his friendship with Tem, so he will have to silence him, and he sets out to get rid of Pina and Legoshi once and for all. The next morning, Legoshi is desperate for the sheer number of situations he's gotten himself into. He's finally found Rui and is supposed to focus on how he should deal with Riz, and the night before he had a dirty dream with Haru, and that was not even the first time that happened. The number of different scenarios has increased and it's so vivid, and he feels Haru's hand with his, without knowing that he's caressing the hand of the real Haru, who tells him that he's holding her hand. Waking up, Legoshi is surprised to see her in his classroom, and she says that she came to see him and have a conversation, and she asks if he's free. Legoshi accepts, but asks to go to a more private place, so they both go to their usual place to talk. Haru thinks about how Legoshi does the best he can to keep his promise he made, and that's always very nice. He's younger than her, and it's rare that sometimes he acts like her father. Rui was the opposite. He was like a baby. He was insecure, but he acted strong, and sometimes he was insensitive, and he always seemed lonely. Haru hugs Legoshi and tells him that she loves him, this being the first time that Haru says this to him directly. Legoshi is happy and thanks her. Haru tells him that he's strong, kind, and reliable, but the more she falls in love with him, the more she's worried about Rui. This leaves Legoshi understandably confused. Haru tries to correct herself and explains what she really wants to say, declaring that she and Rui are over and she's not in love with him anymore. She's only worried about him because she had not heard from him in a long time and he didn't respond to any of her calls, claiming that it's a serious matter when two herbivores are unable to contact each other. Crying, she says she can't do anything and she worries that he's in danger and she hugs Legoshi. Legoshi wants to hug her back and tells Haru that she's very small. Legoshi thinks that her size defines her existence and since the day he attacked her, he's had to overcome the problems that the difference between their size creates. Legoshi takes Haru by the shoulders and declares that he will not let anyone else be unhappy anymore and that he will do his best to achieve it. Haru replies that he is so weird and Legoshi promises himself that he will embrace Haru after solving everything. In the Cherryton Academy library, Pina told Legoshi what happened during a dangerous previous encounter with Riz, who threatened to get rid of them both, but that he shouldn't worry as he fought back in his own way. Legoshi declares that Riz is too dangerous and they must do something before he attacks someone. Pina states that he also thought the same, so he devises a plan where he can act as a decoy, inviting Riz to leave the academy and so Legoshi can do his thing. He refuses to follow this plan, but Pina informs him that he has already sent Riz the invitation. Legoshi rushes to the drama club male dressing room to retrieve the letter from Riz's locker, and he manages to obtain it before he saw it. However, he's attacked from behind by Riz, who slams his head against the locker and later throws him, misinterpreting what happened. Riz claims that he never thought that Legoshi would use Pina's name to set him up, and asks him if he really thinks he can beat him. Legoshi stands up and tells him not to call him by name while looking at him like he is prey. Seeing Legoshi, Riz realizes that Legoshi is different from other carnivores and thinks that he's more interested in eating him than talking to him. Before he can do anything, Riz is struck by a sudden headache from the side effects of his strength restrainers. He quickly opens his locker to grab a container of honey, but Legoshi sneaks away and takes it before Riz can. Legoshi claims to be aware of Riz's situation, and Riz asks him to return it while suffering from a terrible headache, and he claims that Legoshi will never be able to know what pain or stress feels like from taking those drugs. Legoshi states that he prefers seeing Riz the way he is now, and throws the container of honey out the window. Legoshi tells him to show him the beast that he really is, and Riz replies that no one will ever accept him as he really is. The fight begins, and Legoshi hits Riz with several consecutive blows that don't do him any great damage. Riz gives him a series of claws that Legoshi barely manages to dodge. Riz thinks that with claws and fangs, the truth is that carnivores are nothing more than terrifying monsters, and that is why they must hide themselves. Riz wonders if Legoshi understands how lonely he's been. Legoshi stands up with a deep scratch mark above his right eye with blood spilling, causing his vision to look cloudy. So Riz easily overpowers him against the wall and strangles him. Riz claims that eating someone is like a secret ritual, and he drags Legoshi to a place where he claims nobody will find them. In the academy showers, Riz tells Legoshi that he will be able to bleed as much as he wants there. When he takes off his shirt, he reveals that he has several scars, claiming that when you eat someone for the first time, you will feel so much guilt and hunger that you'll hurt yourself. Legoshi responds that Riz has a depressing school life, and Riz attacks him, claiming that he will take back his adolescence. Legoshi manages to dodge his attack, and he gets on Riz's back, telling him to enjoy his adolescence, but that he will first open his old wounds. 
He proceeds to scratch Riz's chest, and Riz replies that these are not old wounds, and he warns Legoshi not to touch his precious memories. Riz throws Legoshi and tells him that Tem was the only one who accepted him, but Legoshi denies that and reminds him that he ate him. Riz claims that he and Tem have a friendship that transcends species, but Legoshi keeps repeating that Riz ate him. Riz declares that predation is the only way to break the wall between species, but Legoshi disagrees and alleges that the only thing that can destroy the wall between species is love. Riz alleges that carnivores are not capable of love, and the only thing that their claws and fangs bring them is hate and loneliness. Riz gives a culminating blow to Legoshi, which he dodges, and Riz asks him to let him touch him a little more directly and proceeds to take a bite, which Legoshi blocks with his foot. Legoshi comments that Riz ate the soft meat of herbivores and he thinks he knows all about them, so then he should try some carnivore meat by having a taste of wolf meat. He vows to break his jaw so he can never bite again. Suddenly, they both hear the voice of a lady who asks if there's someone there. Riz leaves Legoshi and runs to the door to open it and sees that the lady is actually the cleaner. Riz tells her that he's using the showers and asks her to wait a few minutes, which she accepts and leaves. After this, Riz is relieved and proposes that they wash all the blood from the floor, and Legoshi wonders why Riz is like that. If he was just a simple villain, it would be a lot easier to hate him, and if he were the same wolf he was a year ago, he would have just walked away. Legoshi is full of fury and rushes to Riz, who blocks his attack. Legoshi swears that he will never forgive him, and Riz affirms that this is not over. Legoshi proposes that they settle this on New Year's Eve. Riz accepts and claims that there is plenty of time to prepare to kill him. As fellow carnivores, they will settle this once and for all. Later, Legoshi goes to Gohin's clinic and tells him everything that happened. He approves of Legoshi's decision. Although he claims that it would be easier to turn Riz into the police, he laughs knowing that Legoshi will not do it. Legoshi declares that he only follows the policy that he told him about. He recognizes that he also almost ate an herbivore once, so he doesn't think that he wants to punish Riz, he just wants to confront him face to face. Riz seriously thrashed him and he has no chance of winning, so he wants to get stronger as soon as possible. But no such convenient method exists. Gohin disagrees and reveals that there is a way. Wanting to get stronger, Gohin tells Legoshi that there is a way and makes Legoshi get some insects. As Legoshi prepares to eat them alive, he wonders if Gohin had ever eaten insects. Gohin explains that as a panda, he doesn't need protein, and he hasn't eaten insects himself. Legoshi wonders if it's okay to eat them just because they're insects, and Gohin states that he's quite an arrogant person as he usually pushes his justice into others, but his fighting spirit as a carnivore only grows for someone else. Legoshi takes a larva and eats it. He feels the taste of life, but then he feels sick. A spirit of a moth appears next to him, blaming him for not being able to become an adult, and tells him not to throw up. Legoshi apologizes for disparaging the insect and is ready to take any punishment. However, the moth states that insects don't have desires, but it's important to respect life. Legoshi cries, wishing to have been born an insect. The moth states that insect life is also hard, and he tells Legoshi to live earnestly and take the moth into his blood and bones. Legoshi wakes up, and Gohin tells him that he fainted after eating the larva, and he wonders if it's addictive. Legoshi denies it and states that he never wants to do it again. As he looks himself in the mirror, Legoshi tells Gohin that he wants to meet Rui as he will know who he is. Riz starts to feel the different tastes. As he prepares the food for his roommates, they feel that he's grown bigger in the last week. Riz gets excited, stating that he will face Legoshi as the beast he really is. Rui and Ibuki go back to the bar. Ibuki orders drinks, but Rui corrects the order, stating that he doesn't like strong liquor. A woman then enters and sits next to Rui. Rui notices the woman is actually Legoshi in disguise, and he gets angry at the crazy things that he does. Ibuki returns and sees the woman, guesses that she's hitting on Rui, but as she's pretty ugly, he wonders what to do. Rui tells Ibuki to leave them, making Ibuki believe he isn't picky about women. Legoshi reveals the culprit is Riz, and that he will duel him. Rui wonders why he doesn't just give him to the police, but Legoshi insists it's a fight between him and Riz. Legoshi asks Rui if he will be there to support him, but Rui states that he won't, and he wants Legoshi to stay out of his life. Legoshi insists that Rui comes, saying that he wants Rui to see how he lives and that it might be his last day. Legoshi then gets up and tells him the duel will be under the Gazura underpass at 11pm on New Year's Eve, and then he quickly leaves. Legoshi prepares to leave for the fight, and Gohin tells him that whether he wins or loses, his life will dramatically change, and that he is the only carnivore that came to understand the pain of both carnivores and herbivores, making him stronger. Legoshi thanks him for everything and leaves. At the Gazura underpass, Legoshi and Riz face each other. 
Riz states he prepared the starting going, but there's no point if he doesn't notice it. Riz comments that since Legoshi is always so tame, he wanted to turn his anger on if he wanted a serious fight. Legoshi smells blood, and Riz opens his jacket to reveal the blood on his shirt, stating that he is full after eating Pina. Riz states that Pina is in his belly, but Legoshi smells that Pina is 2.1 kilometers away. He has a cut on his hand, and Riz just used Pina's blood to fool him. Riz states that both are carnivores who are longing for herbivores, but Legoshi states that he isn't like him, and he attacks Riz. As they fight, Riz thinks that the strength of carnivores is a substitute for loneliness. As he bites Legoshi, Riz feels happy that his blood and flesh will heal his loneliness. Riz finds Legoshi's meat too hard, and he wonders if he ate meat. Legoshi states that the only important thing is the respect of life. Riz sees Legoshi turning into moths, and then Legoshi slams Riz down. Riz grabs Legoshi and gets up, stating that he won't let an outsider get between him and Tem. He then proceeds to start slamming Legoshi to the ground and walls. Riz tells Legoshi that when he ate Tem, he knew that he didn't have a real friendship and that it was a one-sided devour after all. Legoshi then gets in a more comfortable position as he wishes to know more, surprising Riz as they were just trying to kill each other. Riz tells Legoshi that before he killed Tem, he told him that all carnivores are monsters. Riz was happy that he turned the memory of eating Tem into a beautiful one. Riz feels sad. Although he doesn't remember Tem's voice and face, he still remembers his flavor and smell. Legoshi thinks that he could have become Riz without others' help, and he could have eaten Haru out of intense love for her. Riz wants to continue, commenting that they have claws and fangs only for predations. Legoshi states that they have claws and fangs to protect something important. Riz then hears a noise and sees Rui, who states that Riz looks terrible and he doesn't want to see a devour. Riz charges at Rui. However, Legoshi puts his jacket on his face and pushes him aside and then manages to hide with Rui. Meanwhile, Pina manages to free himself. Legoshi is happy that Rui came, but he wants to finish his fight with Riz, stating it's no longer important if they win or lose, but to show their way of life as carnivores. Legoshi states that he's taking responsibility for his anger, causing Rui to recall his words to Legoshi. As Legoshi thanks him for saving him, Rui recalls Ibuki saying the same. He puts on an act though, and tells Legoshi to go and throw his life away if he wishes. However, Rui starts to uncontrollably cry, and Legoshi decides to stay for a bit longer. Rui feels weak, as he's had to sacrifice a man he loved, Ibuki. Rui thinks that Legoshi is strong, but he's in bad shape and will likely be killed. Not wanting to lose anyone else precious, Rui offers himself to be eaten by Legoshi to gain power. Legoshi sees a number on Rui's leg and states it's his curse and wishes for Legoshi to break it. Legoshi doesn't want to make an excuse that he ate him because he was asked to, and he tells Rui that he will eat him because he himself wants to and he takes a bite. Legoshi then goes to Riz covered in blood and he's buffed up. Riz didn't know that Legoshi and Rui were so close and is surprised that he ate him, but now Legoshi is like Riz. Having eaten only his leg, Rui yells in support for Legoshi. As they fight and Rui supports Legoshi, Riz thinks that his bond wasn't rewarded. He thought it was stronger, but the bond between Legoshi and Rui is solid and much stronger. Riz wonders that if he thanked him while he was alive, if things could have changed. In that moment, Legoshi punches Riz in the stomach and he freezes. As Riz comes to his senses, hearing the sirens, Legoshi comments that it's New Year's. Riz admits defeat and states that his broken heart is starving to get back to life. Riz wonders if a carnivore and herbivore can actually be real friends. Rui tells Riz that what he did is unforgivable, but he apologizes for not noticing how lonely he had been. Legoshi thanks Rui for the meal and is glad that the first and last meat in his life was Rui's. Rui is happy that his curse is finally broken by Legoshi's fangs. Pina called the police and they finally arrive. Later, Legoshi reveals that Rui was taken to the emergency room and was saved, while he and Ariz were arrested as devour offenders. Thanks to his friend's statements, Legoshi was released. Knowing how his life as a criminal would be though, Legoshi tells Haru that he will be dropping out of school. Haru is disappointed that he won't tell her the reason for that, as well as why he has more scars on his face. Haru then tells him that she may find a new boyfriend then, which surprises Legoshi, who does not want that. Interspecies Relations Arc It begins with the journey of a sheep who likes to take the hybrid train, a section of the train where carnivores and herbivores coexist, instead of the herbivores section. Her friend asks her what she's trying to prove by continuously getting on that section of the car, she warns her not to touch her cheek three times inside that car or in front of any carnivore, as this is a way of telling carnivores that they can eat them. 
She begins to explain a little about herself from the work she's done in the past to the sales position she's currently in. Her boss transferred her from the sales area to another section and invited her to an important business meeting. But when she arrived, she began to be treated as a therapy animal. She thought that all of her efforts were in vain because she just ended up being a toy. When she gets home, she begins to think that everything she currently has isn't useful. They're only banal things that society imposes on her because of her work status. She decides to move out of her luxury condo, and when taking the train the next morning, she reveals that she's suicidal. Once inside the train, she finds Legoshi. Seeing the scar on his face, she decides to slap her cheek three times. Seeing this, he decides to get her out of the train as soon as possible. After this, she begins to reflect on her life and her relationship with carnivores. She thinks that the wolf must stay strong and honest. And when she goes apartment hunting, she's offered an apartment at the hidden condo and sees the wolf from the train is going to be her neighbor. Seven is awakened by the noises of her new neighbor. Seeing how late it is, she decides to go out to the restroom and see that her neighbor's lights are off. At that moment, Legoshi also leaves his room and she formally introduces herself to Legoshi, but he does not return the greeting and apologizes internally for ignoring it. The noises Seven had heard were from the members of room 701 who had made an appearance to celebrate Legoshi's new home. Seven retracts her comment on how antisocial Legoshi is due to constant visits from his friends. The most characteristic visit of this was that of Aoba and Bill, who had brought up to date everything that had happened in Cherryton Academy. Bill questions Legoshi about his sudden abandonment of the Academy, telling him that although he is strange, he knows the carnivores need more social skills to be able to fit into society. Legoshi asks himself if he should improve his socialization skills with herbivores, and when he sees his neighbor Seven, he tries. But then he remembers that he already tried meat from herbivores and that this justifies in a certain way his distance from them. Because of that time he saved Seven from being eaten on the train, his wild instincts took over him, remembering the soft texture of her wool. Every night his thoughts remind him of that night when he ate Rui's leg, and he begins to hit the floor, waking Seven. Tired of that constant noise, she decides to see what's going on with him. Legoshi catches her, dominated by his instincts, but he stops himself and begins to ask her to improve his social ability. She answers each of his questions, and he wonders why she's being nice to him despite what happened. She tells him that she's happy that after so long, a carnivore finally calls her by her name. Legoshi starts working in a restaurant where he's gained more confidence again with the herbivores. His co-workers are very friendly, and they don't reproach him for his appearance. They accept him just as he is. After the majority of herbivores leave, the carnivores want to invite Legoshi to the black market to celebrate his first day of work. Although he did his best to reject the offer, they know that he has an experience eating meat. His reaction to herbivores suggests that he eats meat to ease his abstinence from eating. He leaves, saying that he will not eat meat again, but his body wants it. Frustrated by the distance he has to have with his friends, he decides to go home, but meets his grandfather, Gosha. Gosha takes a little of his venom and puts it in Legoshi's mouth. They both know that the Komodo dragon venom is ineffective with those of his kind. Legoshi tells him that this is a very peculiar greeting, and Gosha, without saying a word, hugs his grandson tightly. Gosha understood that his grandson had changed a lot in these five years, not only in that rule, but also in his treatment of other animals. In a sudden silence, Gosha asks Legoshi if everything is his fault. The sudden abandonment of the academy, the scar on his face. Gosha feels that because of him, his grandson became a criminal, despite the fact that he took care of him. When his mother left this world, he had to take care of him, and that this was what led Legoshi to rebel against society. Legoshi understands his grandfather's concerns. He always told him about pacifism, never felt sorry for the circumstances in which they lived, and says to himself that he is enjoying this meeting. An animal interrupts the conversation, exclaiming to Gosha, because he is sitting at a good table, to be careful of converting the facilities into a death trap for his poison. Legoshi, annoyed by his comments, gets up from his post and tries to solve everything, but the animal tells him to either not get involved or to hit him. Legoshi accepts the challenge, while Gosha is surprised by Legoshi's change. One of the local chefs comes out to calm everything down and tells the animals to wait for the seats to be cleared like everyone else. They walk down an alley while Gosha lets him know how disappointed he is, seeing his grandson turned into a criminal. Legoshi tells him that he was not going to accept all the things that he said to him. Gosha exclaims that he's used to those kinds of comments, but the attitude that Legoshi showed is totally contrary to the pacifism that he taught him. At that moment, the group of animals that looked for problems in the restaurant appear to fix what happened. One of them begins to touch Legoshi. A furious Gosha cuts a part of a wing from one of them. They begin to tell Legoshi that this is part of their politics. Pacifism is only good if the strong holds it. Legoshi, impressed with the strength of his grandfather, asks him who he really is. 
Gosha replies that he would tell him after the fight was over and asks if he wants some help. Legoshi reflects a bit on the face that he knew from his grandfather, but when he sees this other face of a fighter, he's impressed. With this, the fight ends, and Legoshi comments that birds are not made to fight on land, to which Gosha asks for an explanation of how he knows that. He says that he saw it in a book, but Legoshi exclaims that he is not in the right to criticize, because he still has to explain everything that happened. Gosha says that it was just a small lesson and not something serious. They decide to go to rest on some benches. Legoshi tells him that it's been years since he saw him drink beer. Gosha tells him that he left that habit once they started living together. Legoshi thinks that he has been hidden from his grandfather for five years, but he surely has even more secrets than him. But they're not secrets as a grandfather, but as the true Gosha. He tells his grandfather that he never wanted to know much about him, because he always thought that he must have had a very difficult life because of all the discrimination he had for being a poisonous animal. But he wants to know why he fell in love with a wolf. Why does he always smile when he sees him? Legoshi wants to know his grandfather better, and Gosha tells him that there's no reason for that smile, since he was born to be happy. To him, he has already achieved everything in his life. Legoshi, seeing his grandfather's drunken attitude, decides to send him home in a taxi. But in Gosha's mind, he wants to introduce his grandson to Yaya to see what kind of reaction he would have, but he thinks he shouldn't complicate his life for his grandson. He is waiting for Legoshi to fall in love with a wolf, but before he leaves, Legoshi reveals that he's in love with a rabbit. At that moment, Gosha is shocked, but could not say anything because the taxi started. Legoshi saw this day as an absolute gain. He was reunited with his grandfather, they did not delve into his past, but he felt able to tell him more about it. He will use it to be stronger and to be able to see Haru again. On the way to his apartment, he meets Seven and thinks that it's time to regain the ability to socialize with herbivores. He starts talking to her, helps her with the food bags while they have a conversation about the soup she's preparing. Haru, not far from them, sees them and is somewhat worried about what she saw. Legoshi begins to work as a waiter in the restaurant. He tries very hard to serve everyone in the best possible way, which leads to him having a resounding mental fatigue due to the hustle and bustle. His co-workers Sunaga and Thomas comment that they are glad that he's so energetic, but hopefully he calms down before he's totally exhausted. One of them tells Legoshi that he must place an order for a marine animal from Marine District 3. Legoshi says that they should send someone who has complete command of the marine language, but one of his companions mentions that previously he was in Cheriton Academy, so Legoshi should have no problems with this language. Once inside District 3, Legoshi passes a security booth and goes to the house of the person who made the order. After waiting a while for a fish to come out, Legoshi says hello in his language, to which the fish responds, but Legoshi does not understand what he's saying. He tries to communicate with signs to explain that he was the one who brought his request for udon, but the fish decides to attack one of his fingers. At that moment, a spotted seal named Sagwan decides to help Legoshi so that he can finish his errands. Legoshi thanks him for the help, to which he tells him that it's normal to help your neighbors. Legoshi asks him if they also live in the hidden condo. After Sagwan helps Legoshi with the delivery of the order, he comments that they're neighbors of the hidden condo. Legoshi sees this as an opportunity to get to know aquatic animals better and improve their ability to socialize once their work shift is over. Both animals go to the hidden condo to speak. Sagwan tells Legoshi that he feels he's floating while walking and feels an aura of freedom, but at that moment the seal hits himself with a pole, and he tells Legoshi not to worry. The blow is not so hard, and even if it were and that would kill him, there would be no need to worry because he would meet again. Legoshi does not understand this, and he tells him that aquatic animals believe in reincarnation of life. They all live in a kind of calmness. They live together with their predators, but they're not afraid to die, because they know that sooner or later, they'll return to this place. Legoshi feels somewhat uncomfortable. He cannot swallow this information, because it's something totally different from what he knows. He cannot accept this way of seeing life, because the society in which he lives in, carnivores and herbivores cannot coexist together for the risk of commenting on murders. Sagwan tells him that he did not force him to accept this way of life, but asks him to not reject it. Legoshi understands what he means and apologizes to him. Once in Sagwan's room, he begins to undress to feel more comfortable. Legoshi, full of shame, avoids seeing him. The seal invites him to also undress and tells him that in a normal situation with an animal of another gender, he knows that he can be wrong, but with the same gender, there should be no problem. Legoshi tells him that most male land animals do not usually do that. Sagwan begins to undress, but Legoshi reflects, telling him that he should not force his beliefs on other animals and tells Sagwan to stay like this. Once the matter is resolved, Sagwan tells him that there are rumors about him. The new resident of the hidden condo is a wolf, who was convicted of a case of predation. 
Legoshi accepts that he is the wolf of the rumors and the seal asks him if it happened for something terrible, and he replies yes, but it was more terrible for his victim. Sagwan tells him that he accepts his culture and that it is more than enough to accept him no matter what he did in the past. Legoshi feels that every time he speaks with him, it's as if he were talking to the sea. He likes this old seal very much. Seven invites Legoshi to buy sneakers to get to know his shoe tastes as a way to investigate carnivores. Legoshi, not having a strong sense of fashion, chooses simple sneakers, something that bothers Seven a bit because her company believes that flashy shoes are what carnivores want. While Legoshi goes to the bathroom, some of Seven's co-workers arrive at the premises. When they notice her, they begin to annoy her, but Legoshi comes to her rescue. Seeing how her co-workers' attitude changed because they were afraid of the wolf, she's very angry because she felt despised in front of carnivores. She believes that her years of study were in vain because they do not give her the respect she deserves. She exposes this anger towards Legoshi, telling him how despite being a social outcast who is 12 years younger than her, he's managed to shut her co-workers up with just a few words and not a single fake smile, all because he's a big carnivore. Feeling guilty, he tries to make her forgive him. On the rooftop of the hidden condo, they make amends and Seven tells Legoshi that he did nothing wrong. At that moment, Sagwan comes to the rooftop, and Legoshi introduces him to Seven. Seven is back after a day's work. When she's at the entrance of the hidden condo, the manager of the building is arguing with a police officer. When they both notice Seven's presence, the officer introduces himself as Kona, a mountain gorilla in charge of the Algema district. He explains to Seven that she should be careful because of the rise of predations done under the influence of the blood bone drug that's being sold to young carnivores, because they're told it's an energy drink for them. Meanwhile, Legoshi is returning from work when he's cornered by several carnivores who exalt him to approve of a new energy drink. They take him to an alley where they try to drug Legoshi with the smell of the drug. However, Legoshi is not affected by it because he had previously tasted the flesh and blood of an herbivore, so the drug is ineffective. The band of animals take out various knives and throw themselves in a fight against Legoshi. The criminals, seeing that the drug had no effect on Legoshi, are surprised because few carnivores are immune to this drug. To avoid problems, they decide to kill Legoshi, but only manage to make a shallow cut on his left cheek while Legoshi dodges all their blows. He deals an accurate blow to the criminal and is reminded of his fight with Riz during New Year's Eve, because his body already knows how to act in this situation. Legoshi manages to defeat the leader of the gang, and the police arrive at the scene and take everyone to the police station. At the police station, Kona greets Legoshi and thanks him for arresting those criminals who had caused so much chaos in the city. Kona's partner tells Legoshi that a friend of his came to visit. After the policemen leave, Rui enters the room where Legoshi is, telling him that he read an online article about a 17-year-old gray wolf who captured a drug cartel. When he read that, he had a feeling it was Legoshi, and after some investigation, he easily found him. Rui brought him something to eat, fruit jelly and castella. Legoshi spits out the water he was drinking in surprise when Rui tells him a joke about what he prefers to eat. Rui takes the opportunity to claim that Legoshi ate his leg and then dropped out of school without telling him. Legoshi asks him if he's still going to school, with Rui responding that he's starting university next month to fulfill his obligations. Legoshi looks at Rui and thinks about why herbivores are such beautiful life forms, coming to the conclusion that he's just a perverted wolf. Rui, without remorse, tells him that he knows about Legoshi's herbivore fetish, but in the end, it doesn't matter that he's a pervert. He's acting out of a desire to save someone. Legoshi understands that he wants to protect herbivores and their smiles. While Legoshi is at his workplace, he realizes that he's losing his withdrawal symptoms and doesn't fear touching herbivores after a gazelle co-worker briefly touches his hand. This makes him happy to see that he's progressing gradually. After his work shift, he returns to his apartment at the hidden condo, where the building's manager tells him that a big package has arrived for him. Legoshi mentions that he hasn't ordered anything, but thinks that it's maybe from his grandfather, but he's told that it's come from the police station. He reads the letter that came with the package, which tells that the police are thankful to Legoshi for stopping the bloodbone drug dealers, as well as apologizing for causing a fuss in the condo. Legoshi opens the package and finds lots of rice cakes, which is food of high class and luxury. With so many rice cakes, Sagwan and Seven suggest for Legoshi to hold a roast on the roof of the building and invite all of the residents of the building to expand his horizons. Come the day of the roast, and all the residents attend the meeting. As they wait for the rice cakes to roast, everyone introduces themselves, what room they reside in, and what they do. Sagwan tells Legoshi that the land is a very interesting place and does not regret stepping out of the sea, to which Legoshi says that he does not regret dropping out of school. Because it's quite late, Legoshi prepares to go to sleep so he can go to work early the next day, but he discovers that a letter sent by Yaya is also in the package. 
After receiving a letter from Yaya thanking him for confronting the Bloodbone drug dealers and being invited to meet Yaya, Lekoshi finds himself buying clothes for the occasion. After buying clothes, Lekoshi stops by the market where he finds numerous graffiti of hatred for Yaya, which he recalls seeing before. Lekoshi sits down and gives himself an introspective without reaching any apparent conclusion. At night, Lekoshi arrives at the Metropolitan Police Department where he will meet Yaya. When Lekoshi enters, he's received and escorted to the last floor. Lekoshi, nervous for not knowing what awaits him, arrives at the last floor, face to face with Yaya, who welcomes him. After they meet, Yaya takes Legoshi to a room where he grows his own special carrots. Yaya invites Legoshi to a carrot dinner and serves him an appetizer. While they have dinner, Yaya notices the great resemblance of Legoshi with his grandfather, Gosha, and takes the time to analyze Legoshi. Legoshi abruptly asks if Yaya is the B-star. Yaya asks how he came to that conclusion, and Legoshi says that he had leads because of his status in the Metropolitan Police, and because carrots are very tasty and seem to be from very high quality so Yaya must have had a very high social status. Yaya laughs and explains the process of growing carrots, expressing that the room represents his perfectionist ideals. After dinner, Yaya tells Legoshi about the multiple criminals he caught just one day before dinner and that he wants to create a perfect society. Legoshi mentions that he likes the imperfections of society because even with the imperfections, society works, and he praises Yaya for accomplishing that. Although he does not express it, Yaya is bothered by this comment. Yaya reveals to Legoshi that a B-star can be granted any request, even using carnivores as fertilizer. With such revelation, Legoshi is shocked and tries to leave, but Yaya knocks him down and subjects Legoshi to the ground. Yaya reveals that he knows that he ate Rui's leg to defeat Riz, and that he will be the one to decide if he ends up as compost in his garden or not. Submitting Legoshi to the ground, Yaya prepares to vent all the resentment he feels against Gosha and Legoshi. Yaya proceeds to sue Legoshi to plead for his life, apologizing for being a carnivore, humiliating himself. Legoshi agrees and apologizes on his knees, pleasing Yaya. Legoshi stands up, revealing that he plucked his fangs, leaving Yaya in shock as Legoshi continues to pluck out his last remaining fang. Legoshi declares that he now has the right to hit Yaya and punches him in the face, knocking him down. Yaya, who does not seem to have suffered damage, rises, praising Legoshi's spirit. Legoshi bows and tells Yaya that carnivores are suffering and that his methods are wrong, and he ends up apologizing for hitting him. Legoshi goes to Gohin for medical assistance. In Gohin's clinic, Legoshi cleans up the place, and before leaving, Gohin gives him false teeth. Legoshi rejects it, assuring that he no longer needs fangs. Gohin tries to dissuade him, but Legoshi continues to infuriate him. Legoshi finally tries the teeth, but is frustrated because he wants to be strong without his fangs. Legoshi leaves the clinic, and while leaving the black market, he does not know whether to see his attributes as a good thing. While walking, Legoshi hears Haru calling him in the distance. Seeing him, Haru wishes him a happy birthday, as Legoshi is now 18 years old. Legoshi, who is not aware of his own birthday, runs to where Haru is. Haru tells him that it was to congratulate him, and that she is not as stupid as him, but she is still pretty stupid. Haru accompanies Legoshi to his apartment while Legoshi warns her about the decaying structure of the building. Haru says she's not interested in how the place is and simply wants to see his room. Inside Legoshi's room, he feels that he has lost the ability to converse with his girlfriend to the extent that he tells a story about a stain that he has on the ceiling of his apartment. However, that heavy atmosphere changes when Legoshi tells Haru about dropping out of school because he ate Rui's leg. She gets mad at him for ruining the moment and angrily asks him to tell her everything while they have a date. On the date, Legoshi tells her everything, about how he discovered Riz as Tem's killer, why he ate Rui's leg, and how he supports himself financially by working at Udon's Bebebe restaurant. Upon hearing the whole story, Haru feels that Legoshi has become more handsome since he became independent. While they continue their date, Haru tells him that university is boring, full of insincere know-it-alls, and that the decision Legoshi made about dropping out of school was the right one for a philosophical wolf like him. Nearing the end of their date, Haru makes a special request to Legoshi to take her to the black market. Legoshi thinks about the carnivores-herbivores ratio within society. Inside the black market, he notices that it's similar, therefore that it's the reason why the society can calmly see the madness as if it were a normal part of everyday life. His thoughts are interrupted by Haru, who's in a hurry to enter the market, and Legoshi recommends that she hides her face to avoid any danger. When they enter, they hear the various cries that merchants use to sell all kinds of meat. Haru indicates to Legoshi that she wants to enter a certain place, and he notices that the place is a rabbit meadery. Bit masochistic? 
When entering the place, Legoshi explains to her that this establishment has a contract with a special funeral home, and that's how they get the bodies, and once a week a priest comes to pray. Haru explains that she's not at all shocked when she sees such a scene, because she thought that she would feel equal to others being in bed. When she saw these rabbits, her self-destructive impulses no longer control her, and especially because now she has Legoshi. She asks Legoshi to kiss her, but he has a panic attack and begins to talk about the money he has in his bank account, and how he can't marry an herbivore since he's a predatorial offender. He says he can't promise a future with her, so he can't do something as shameless as kissing her. They're interrupted by the owner asking about the uproar in his establishment. As they leave, an angry Haru tells Legoshi that no matter the place, he always does the same thing. A hidden rat mentions to Yaya that they have found Legoshi's greatest weakness. The boys from room 701 rush to meet Legoshi. Seeing him in the distance, they're happy to meet again after Legoshi's departure from Cherryton Academy. They ask him how life is as an adult. Legoshi tells them that he's dirt poor and asks them how everything is going in the academy. Jack tells them that they finished their advancement exams and are third years now. Colette lets him know that Voss has been using his bed, but he only takes up about 1 50th of it. He lets him know that everyone misses his suffocating wolf stench, especially Jack. At the end of all the news about how they have been, Jack indicates the place where they're going to hang out. Jack lets Legoshi know that everyone is preparing for their college entrance exams. Legoshi realizes that everyone will soon go their separate ways. When in doubt, Legoshi asks everyone if they can still hang out, even when they're grown up. They affirm that it's obvious they would continue seeing each other, although Jack does not know about catching balls at B-Strike when they're grown up. Revenge of the Love Failure Arc Haru's father finds Haru and Legoshi hanging outside the family house, exchanging their schedules, and invites Legoshi to a family dinner. After dinner, Haru's dad offers to drive Legoshi to the train station. On the way there, Legoshi confesses his love for Haru. Haru's dad seems to like Legoshi. Yaya asks Legoshi to work together to capture Melon, a new character and a dangerous criminal, saying that he can get rid of Legoshi's criminal record and even offers money. In the club, Yaya and Legoshi capture Melon. When Yaya leaves for backup, Melon palavers Legoshi and Legoshi releases him. They both leave the club. Legoshi gets shot by Melon in the stomach. Legoshi is in a coma having an out-of-body experience. He sees his mother, Lino, who killed herself when Legoshi was 12. Legoshi expresses regret for that night, saying that if he faced Lino, she might have not taken her own life. She admits she has a lot of regrets too, but giving birth to Legoshi makes her feel like a winner in life. She asks him to live more. Legoshi wakes up from the coma and escapes to the deep night market, leaving a note promising to come back to the hospital. There, he eats boiled somen. He then goes to Yaya to ask him for a second chance. Later, Legoshi is trying to find Melon. Melon, sent from his mask, brings Legoshi to the tattoo shop in the black market. While trying to seem like a customer, he gets a tattoo with the date of that day. Sloth tattooist Holger responds to Melon several hours after Melon's visit giving Legoshi information that Melon will be at the beach in the evening. Legoshi admires the view of the ocean and spaces out. He gets shot in the ear. It turns out to be a trap. Melon tells the Shishigumi lions to get rid of Legoshi. They weigh him down with concrete and tie him up, preparing to throw him into the ocean. The lions let Legoshi say his last words. He asks if they will tell him Melon's weakness and if he will be back on the beach in 30 minutes. They get intrigued and agree throwing him off the cliff. He's almost eaten by a shark, but saying, I am Legoshi the Grey Wolf and I'm friends with the Spotted Seal in sea language that Sagwan taught him earlier, it forces the shark to bring Legoshi to the beach. The Shishigumi are genuinely surprised. The Shishigumi tell Legoshi about Kopi Luwak, an illicit hybrid organization and supposed pure blood supremacy group controlled by Deshiko the Tsevet. Legoshi is feeling meat drunk and tries to get home as soon as possible. Haru is waiting for him. She wants to stay overnight because she got scared of Melon's actions. He gets the scent of a male on Haru and asks if she enjoys her campus life. She gets extremely annoyed by that question and says that she won't restrict her freedom. Also, she tells him that every time she tries to kiss him, he rejects her. Legoshi tells Haru, that's too risky, physically, socially, and economically. She insists on Legoshi to show it to her to see if it's risky physically. Later, Legoshi shows Haru his dentures. They sleep together. Legoshi wakes up in blood-stained bedclothes. He thinks he ate Haru! His fur turns completely white. Turns out Haru is alive and she just spilled tomato juice on the sheets. Legoshi gets it together and promises that he will make Haru happy. He gives her a kiss on the cheek and leaves to confront Melon. In the hideout, Legoshi and Melon fight. Melon says how hard it was for him to grow up as a hybrid. Legoshi says that he will raise his children with love, so they'll at least turn out better than Melon did. 
After a chase, Legoshi catches Melon, but the police stop him from turning Melon to Yaya because they think it's a carnivore attacking an herbivore. Melon runs off and Legoshi takes refuge in Cherryton Academy where he has to stay until his fur turns back to normal. Legoshi meets Pina and visits the drama club. Bill tells Legoshi that the entire school was segregated by carnivores and herbivores and the clubs were put on hold. Legoshi notices that Jack is feeling down. Jack opens his heart up to him and says that he's been trying to make himself cry by carrying onions with him. He hates the fact that he can't hate anyone. Jack eats an onion and Legoshi tries to make him vomit it out. Legoshi howls, cheering Jack up. Jack tells Legoshi what they've been learning about in history class. He tells him about the Karnaherba War, which happened a hundred years ago. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.